Hello guys and welcome, here is a beginner tutorial for the shader graph with Unity 2019 and the lightweight render pipeline. First I open my Unity Hub, go to the installs, then I choose beta releases and here you can find the Unity 2019 beta. I press download and then you can choose the components that you like to install and I also select Android because we will need it for the next tutorial. Spoiler alert, then I press next and Unity will be downloaded and installed. Ok, this will take a while and after the installation is finished, I select this version as my preferred one. And then I create a new project and call it for example, Sample Shader or whatever. For the template I choose the lightweight render pipeline, because then we have a configuration with that we can use the shader graph out of the box. Alright, I press create project, Unity starts and we get this nice example scene which is a good starting point because components are added like reflection probes, some game objects and the post-processing volume and layer. Here you can see some environment assets and props that are added to empty groups so that you can hide or display these. But now I remove the props from the scene so that we have more space to add our own object later on that uses the shader that we are going to create right now. But before we do this let's open the package manager and have a look at the packages that are loaded with the template Lightweight Render Pipeline. Here we have it, the Lightweight Render Pipeline package and the cool thing is that we don't have to install the Shader Graph package, which we want to use, because it is already included in the Lightweight Render Pipeline package. This means we can go ahead and create our custom shader and the material that uses this shader. So the first thing that I do is to create a material inside of the material folder. Alright, and I call this material my shader mat. In the inspector you can see that the material uses the lightweight render pipeline shader, but later on we will replace this with our custom shader. Ok, so let's go ahead and create the shader, which is also pretty simple. Just right click, choose create, shader. And for the shader we have to select a graph and I use the most common one, a PBR graph. So what you can do here is to define a shader for a PBR material. I call the shader, let's be creative, my shader and what's new is when you double click this, a window will be opened that contains the shader graph editor. You can dock this like any other editor. So dock this here centered and what you can see here is the output node, the PBR master and a preview of your shader. You can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel and you can drag any node and any window around and for the preview window you can change the size as well. The view can be panned when you hold the ALT key pressed and then you drag the view with the left mouse button pressed or you drag it with the middle mouse button pressed. Ok, as you might know when you press SHIFT and SPACEBAR you set the view to full screen and then we go ahead and create our first shader. By the way, after you created your shader always press SAVE ASSET because then you can use your shader for your materials. Ok, what can we do right now with this single node with the PBR master for example, we could set the color and I set this to a bluish tone. But that's not very interesting, we can do this with any material, so we move on and create a new node. So you guessed it, it's a node based editor and to create a new node just press the space bar and then you can select the node from categories or you search for a particular node. What I want to use now is a simple noise texture, so I search for noise. Ok, and here we have it, simple noise and it has a scale property with that you can define the detail of the noise. The next node that I will add is a Fresnel effect that can be used for example to create a kind of rim light to your objects. You can control the effect by using the power property. What this actually does is to set the thickness of the rim light. Ok, I keep it like that and the next thing that I want to do is to combine these two nodes that I added and to do this I use a node called Multiply. You can also right click and then the context menu pops up and you can create a node, then I search for Multiply and add the outputs of the two nodes that are created to the inputs of the Multiply node. 
and I connect the output of the multiply node now to the input to the emission of the PBR master. And when I increase the power of the Fresnel, you can already see in the preview window how the shader will look like when you add it to a sphere. Looks pretty cool, but what I also want to do is to add a color to this rim light. So pretty simple, just search for a color node and then combine it with the nodes that we have. Okay, here we have it, the color node I selected. I set the mode to HDR so that we have a high dynamic color range. And what I can do as well in this color node is to define the intensity of the color. I will set the color from black to an orange tone. I guess this could look really cool for the rim light. And now we have to combine this color node with the multiply node. And for this we just add a new multiply node and then connect these as before. It's so simple once you get it and you can create amazing things with it. Okay, after we connected this new node, we just plug it into the emission input. And here's the preview with the colored textured rim light. Okay, wouldn't it be great now to control parameters from your material in Unity? For example, the scale of your texture or the intensity of your color. To do this, you just have to define so-called properties for your shader. It's quite simple. Let me first save the asset and then we define the scale of the noise texture as a property. The scale is a float value and for this we can use a data type called vector1. So I drag out a connection from the scale, then I add a node from the input category and this is a basic input and here it is vector1. So we can control this now using this new input node, but we can't see it from the outside from the Unity editor. To be able to do this, we have to convert this into a property. To do this, you right click the node that you would like to convert and then you choose convert to property. All right, and now you would assume that you see your properties somewhere in a properties window but we have a bug here, well, this is a beta version. And we have to close this editor window now of the shader graph and open it again to see a window that displays all the properties that we defined. And you can also use this window to create new properties to rename or remove existing ones. Okay, so now I close it, then reopen it. And then you can see this new window called my shader with the vector property that we define for the scale. The next thing I do is to use this window to rename the property. I double click it and then I rename this to scale. And the next property I want to define is the color. So I right click the color node, define this as property and you can see it directly appears in the my shader window as property. All right, the shader is ready. As I said, save the asset if you want to use it for your material. And after that, I go back to the Unity editor I press again shift and space to toggle the full screen mode of the active editor. I activate the scene again and then I have to add an object. So I go to game object, 3D object and I select a sphere. And for this I want to use the shader now that we created. At the moment the object has a default material but I go ahead and drag the material that we created onto the object. And this material has to use now the shader that we created. So I open the shaders here on the material, go to shader graphs and here is my shader. And once it is applied, you can see the shader for this object in your scene. Isn't that simple? And you also see the properties that we defined, the scale and the color. And both can be changed in the inspector. For example, I use now 500 for the scale and you can see the details on the material or I change the intensity of the color to create a more glowing effect. So there are endless possibilities for this shader graph feature and I use it a lot. Please let me know if you want to see more tutorials for this. There are many requests to add more features to my low poly game kit. These will come soon, but I will migrate the asset to use the lightweight render pipeline. So just to let you know, I'm working on it. If you like the video guys and my channel then don't forget to subscribe, perhaps you also think about supporting me as my patron, this would really help a lot. And if you have any questions or ideas, add these to the comments. Thanks a lot for this guys.
Thanks for your support and I see you on JNM.